So a brand new statement just came out from the Jaclyn Hill camp and a lot of people aren't very happy because they feel like Jaclyn Hill is using her mental health as an excuse for everything that's gone down with her lipsticks. So that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this video, but do me a favor and make sure that you stay tuned to this entire video because we're gonna be talking about some very important mental health subjects. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can pull from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And it is a beautiful, beautiful day. It is the first day of July, but even more importantly, my brand new book, Rewire Your Anxiety is out and available now. So check out the description as well as in the pinned comment down below. The ebook version and the audiobook version are both out. So go grab yourself a copy. Also for anybody who entered the contest on Twitter or Instagram, I have announced the winners. So go check that out. And everybody, if you are a loyal patron, make sure you go check out the Patreon page because I've uploaded the files for all of you who get free copies, all right? Anyways, Rewire Your Anxiety available now. Check out the description as well as the pinned comment, all right? But anyways, yeah, let's talk about what's going on with Jaclyn Hill. And those of you who are new to my channel, this video isn't necessarily about Jaclyn Hill. I'm using this story as context, but the goal of my videos is to help all of you out because mental health is something that we all need to care about. And whenever topics like this come up, we need to really look at it and see, okay, well, let's, let's maybe look at this in a different angle, but there are definitely some issues with the way Jaclyn Hill is handling this situation. So just keep in mind, like I want you to look at this story and reflect on it and see how it affects you personally, all right? So anyways, um, this is an Instagram post from Jaclyn Hill's mom, which she put out yesterday, and it says this. I want to thank each and every one of you for your wonderful messages, thoughts, and prayers for Jaclyn during this time. As her mom, it has been heartbreaking in so many ways. It was difficult and very disappointing enough that some of her lipsticks had issues, but the onslaught of hate, lies, and even betrayal has by far been the worst part. It has been shocking. No one deserves to be beaten when they are already sad and down. But this post is not intended to focus on the negative, but rather the positivity that has come from this. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank those of you who are true and loyal followers and friends of Jacqueline. I've always said that she has the very best followers of all. You all are the most kind, sweet, and beautiful souls inside and out, and Jacqueline truly loves you. I love you. It has always been an honor to meet you, whether it's in person or through a written message. I'm so very grateful for each and every one of you, and I wish I could personally give each one a hug. Thank you for having faith in her and forgiving her. Please know that Jacqueline needs some time, but she will be back stronger than ever. She is surrounded by love and support, and she will get through this. She will dust herself off, learn from her mistakes, and try again. After all, she has a dream to fulfill. As long as I have breath in my body, I will always be her cheerleader. Please join me in continuing to cheer her on as true friends do, and thank you for having courage and being kind. So yeah, after that post, there is a lot that has been said about this. Now, one thing I, I do wanna mention, because I saw some other people saying like, oh my God, this post is getting so much hate. Like, I was scrolling through the comments to put in this video because I'm about to read a few. And like, there's a lot of love and support and that's really good to see, all right? Like, people do need to be held accountable and that's what we're gonna be talking about, um, especially with the aspect of mental health and that, how that affects you and all of that. But it does look like Jacqueline does have a lot of loyal, loving supporters, all right? But anyways, here's just a few comments that I saw from the aspect of her saying she needs a break for her mental health. Bullying and attacking are not okay but I don't think all the negative feedback comes from hate. It's a public safety issue at this point, but she decided to run and hide. She is the CEO of her company. It's completely unprofessional. I know mental health is important, but how about public health and safety? Why not just recall them if she actually loves her fans? I'm really sad and disappointed on how she handled the situation. Next one says, quote unquote, she needs time. She's a brand owner. It's incredible that poor Jacqueline needs a break, but every other company who's ever had a bump in their road of success has had to take the loss, the hit, the backlash, and move forward and work their butt off. 
but Jacqueline has another failed launch and she gets to delete her stuff from social media after disrespecting her customer slash fan base. Wow, just wow. Jacqueline sounds like the last person who should be running a company. And last one, I think this is one of the best comments and it's professional and it makes sense, but it says, I think people can take the toxic hate too far, but I have to say, while I haven't been a CEO, I was part of the senior management team in my company for many years. If I made an error, of course I did, as everyone does. What I didn't do was expect my staff or family to tell my clients it was okay because I was a nice person and had to take some time away from my mental health. My clients would have left and I probably would have been fired. Instead, I would own my mistakes and ensure I fix them for my clients so their bottom line wasn't impacted. That is how you run a business. Most social media influencers, particularly the young ones or those who started young and know no different, do not seem to understand good business practice. Perhaps, as Jacqueline said, she needs to get back to what she's good at, tutorials, even if her heart isn't really in it. Maybe she can find the passion in that again. Not everyone is cut out for running slash owning a business as much as they may like the idea of it. So yeah, I want to talk about a couple different angles of this. So like I said, that last comment right there, like I think that's really, really true. So the first thing that we need to understand is that Mental health is impacted in everything you do, whether it's good or bad. If Jaclyn Hill had the most successful launch, if you had the most successful project that you were working on, that could affect your mental health. That can make your ego blow up if you have imposter syndrome. Maybe you think that you're really not that good enough and this is all fake and da 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 da. But the failure, yes, it's gonna impact your mental health. But here's the thing. Like we have to be proactive about our mental health. We have to be resilient. And this is something I had to learn a long, long time ago because you never know when life is just going to slap you right in the face and you're gonna have to trudge forward. Because here's the thing, and this is why I feel a lot of people are very upset that mental health is being brought up in Jacqueline Hill's case, because when you are the brand owner, when you are the face, right? When you are the head honcho, like you don't have that luxury anymore. Like that luxury it went pshh, it went bye-bye. It's kind of like being a parent. Like imagine if you were being a parent and you're just like, hey, sorry, I can't, I cannot parent you right now because of my mental health. Like some people do do that, but we don't really think too well of them because our kids still need us. So in Jacqueline Hill's case, like there are people out there who are still dissatisfied and they need answers, they need a recall. You know, I know they released the refund, but a lot of people want the recall. And I, I see a lot of people are confused about that and just real quick to touch on that. A recall gets the contaminated items out of people's hands, all right? It takes them out of people's hands. Like, I don't get why that's hard to comprehend. Like, if there's something potentially dangerous out there, it's not about just giving the money back. We have to make sure that anybody who might become physically ill or hurt by the lipsticks, that product needs to be removed from their hands. That is why you do a recall, all right? But anyways, again, like, when there's people expecting something from you or who are counting on you, you have to be there. So, like, I, I worked in a drug and alcohol treatment center for over three years and we specialized in mental health and one of the one of the worst parts about it was was like I followed up with all the clients after they left. I talked with clients, I talked with their family members, and everything like that. And I experienced a lot of death. A lot of death. All right. And sometimes I would get a phone call about death right before I had to do a group. And that is one of the reasons why I have to work so hard on my mental health. Even though I do, you know, the Rewired Soul full time now, like the YouTube channel, writing books and all of that, like I still have to be mentally well for all of you. Like imagine if I got the phone call that somebody passed away and then I'm like, hey everybody, sorry, I can't do, I can't do a group. Screw all of you, but my mental health is screwed up and I need to, you know, whatever, right? And like, don't get me wrong, like I do think that more companies and businesses do need to allow for you know mental health days and things like that but like part of a lot of our jobs is that we have to work through it like one of the reasons that i didn't take a bunch of sick days when i was working there or anywhere else is because other people are relying on me for me to just like take a day off like now don't get me wrong if i was sick i took a day off because i didn't want to get everybody else sick but i'm just saying like one of those lazy sick days like other people have to pick up my slack and that i think is what people are really upset about so 
in Jacqueline Hill's case or some of your case, like you have to trudge through it. You have to work through it. You have to get through that. Even though you're not mentally well during that time, you still have to show up, you have to suit up and handle that business. And once everything is taken care of, now, you can take your mental health break. But kind of like that commenter said, like not everybody is cut out for this. Like there's a lot of things that people want to do, but they're not cut out for it. Like when I look at Jaclyn Hill's case, but it's not just Jaclyn Hill, it's a lot of us, right? Like we don't like asking for help. And I see this a lot with entrepreneurs and business owners where they don't hire certain teams or whatever to save money and all this other stuff. But then all of the pressure goes on them, right? Because CEOs of bigger companies, like if, if they were in Jaclyn Hill's position, they have teams of people who are designed to handle this stuff, right? So it's not just one person managing all this. So if you're a control freak, like just realize how you being controlling is affecting your mental health, okay? But in the case of Jaclyn Hill, here's something that I want you all to think about, which kind of bothers me when I see people saying, oh, she's just using mental health as an excuse, da 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 Like, we see this all the time. We see so many people saying that. And I really hope that people understand the difference between mental health being an excuse or being a reason, all right? Because there's a big difference. Now, don't get me wrong, some people do use it as an excuse. But what happens is, my worry is the stigma. My worry is, that other people will be afraid to talk about their mental health in fear that other people are going to say, you're just making an excuse. You see what I mean? Because just people watching this and reading these comments, they might be like, oh, well, I can't open up about my mental health, or people will just think that I'm making a, a, an excuse for this. And here's the thing, we need more people talking about mental health, not less, all right? But the last thing I wanna say is therapy. Therapy, therapy, therapy. I, I wish, I wish that once, once YouTubers hit like a certain, a certain amount of subscribers or fan, any celebrity, any person, like even if you're just working your way up the corporate ladder, like you had to have a therapist. You just absolutely had to have a therapist. I had my therapy appointment this morning and whoo hoo girl, like I was able to talk to my therapist about being anxious about my launch of my book and everything like that. And we were able to talk through it. I was able to break down like, you know, these fears and these belief systems and everything like that. Like if you have the resources, see a dang therapist. Like there is nothing, there's nothing good about taking a break if you're not working to improve and strengthen your mental health. So I do hope the best for someone like Jaclyn Hill, but I hope she's doing something with this break and not just trying to put out the fires, but also like seeking a therapist and improving her mental health. Maybe it'll help her, like the last video I did, retrace her steps and help her take in the criticism and see what other people are seeing. Because the problem is a lot of us are so delusional and we lack this self-awareness that we don't understand why everybody's so upset, right? We can't see it. So a therapist can help us see what that issue is, right? And like, this is why I make these videos, because so many of you are sitting back here judging Jaclyn Hill, looking at her, looking at, oh, she screwed up this launch and everything like that. But I want you to ask you, right? Like, what are you doing? Like, are you somebody who is just completely lacking self-awareness and you don't know why it seems like the whole world's out to get you? Is it because you're not noticing something about yourself? You need to work on that ish, all right? But anyways, I do hope Jacqueline Hill comes out on the other side of this thing. I hope this gets straightened out. I hope she does not give up on her dreams or her passions, but she definitely does need to improve, all right? But anyways, don't forget, check the description and the pinned comment down below. Rewire Your Anxiety is out now, baby, all right? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, get access to some perks and benefits, like all of my books for free, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.